Okay, this is the end of chapter 10.1, um, Difference in Proportions, and we're going to finish up the junior high experiment. We have a confidence interval and a significance test to find for the uh, junior high experiment. This should be, this sheet right here should be at the end of the packet I gave you um, for chapter 10.1 difference in proportions. So I filled out the information we've gone over before. We're going to start with the confidence interval. Um, 93, 72, 165, 27, 48, 75, 120, 120, 240. P1 is the proportion of junior high kids who pick male when male asks. P2 is the proportion of junior high kids who pick male when female asks. And I gave you the, the P naught, um, the expected uh, P hat for proportion one and for proportion two. These are all numbers that we found before, but I'm gonna help you with the setup and then you're gonna finish up and, and post this to my canvas so I can grade it. So here we go. It says, construct a 95% confidence interval for the true difference in proportions of kids who chose male when a boy asked and chose male when a girl asked. State plan, do conclude, and I have an interpret step which you're gonna to have to add in on your, um, on, your, on your sheet here. So first of all, let's state, let's state, I want a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion and the true proportion of P1 minus P2, where P1 and P2, and I don't really feel like copying them down again, so I'm just going to draw an arrow. Plan. Well, this is proportions, so it's a Z interval. So this is a two sample. Z interval, and we've discussed the the conditions uh, quite extensively. I'm going to do them one more time, just as a reminder. And don't forget, when you do difference in proportions, you do need to check both independently. You need to check the conditions for P1, and you need to check the conditions for P2. Uh, first condition: SRS. SRS. Definitely not. We did a big time convenience sample. Um, 120 is less than 10% of all junior high. That one checks out. 120 is less than 10% of all junior high. And that one checks out. Um, 120 times 0.775. I got the 0.775 from up there. Uh, 120 was how many kids we sampled. And 120 times 1 minus 0 0.775, and 120 times 0 0.6, and 120 times 1 minus 0 0.6, and all of these are supposed to be greater than or equal to 10, and they are. So we didn't meet the SRS conditions. We're going to do the math anyway, and we're going to go from there. So now here's where you take over. We've stated, we've planned. Um, now you're going to do a confidence interval. And the confidence interval is the P1 minus P2 plus or minus Z star um, times that big, huge square root standard deviation. You need to go find that. Um, we've been doing this now for a couple videos. So go find that, and then you're going to find a confidence interval. And after you find the confidence interval, you're going to go ahead and conclude. And your conclude statement, I want you to take the same form as every other statement. I am 95% confidence the true difference in P1 minus P2 is blah, 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 blah. So you can go ahead and do that. But then after that, I want an interpret step. And interpret means what is going on in the context of the problem. And specifically on your interpret step, I want you to discuss if zero is in your confidence interval. Because if zero is in this confidence interval, whatever you get right here, if zero is in that confidence interval, there's a likely chance you're 95% confident the true, true proportion is in this interval. 
If, if zero is in that interval, there's a likely chance there is no difference between a boy asking and a girl asking. But if zero is not in that interval, let's say the interval shifts towards the positive, well, that means the true proportion of, of boys asking is likely greater. If it shifts towards the negative, it, the true proportion of boys asking is probably less than. We know it's not less than. We, there's preliminary evidence that shows it's not less than. It, it's likely either greater than or maybe zero does appear in that confidence interval. So interpret, I want, uh, I want a sentence just discussing, hey, is zero in that confidence interval? What do I think is going on here? And, uh, and write a good sentence. So that's the confidence interval part. Uh, the next one that you're going to do is the significance test part, and I'm going to help you set this one up also. So similar situation, similar numbers, all the numbers are the same. Um, we do want to create a, a uh, significance test here. Again, still less powerful than the confidence interval, but uh, it has its merits nonetheless. So here we go. You can press pause. You can fill in those numbers right now. Let's go. State. Uh, this is going to be a Z calculation. Z calculation significance test. Mr. Dor uh, Mr. Mueller, I don't have that much longer. I'll, I'll help you in here. Significance test. Um, that's what we're going to start with. Um, we have a null hypothesis, H of O. And our null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the true proportion. So there, the, the difference, or there is no difference in proportion. So the difference, um, these two numbers would be the same. So we would get zero if we subtracted them. And our, our alternative hypothesis is that, well, if we subtracted them, since this one was bigger, um, the, the difference would be positive. We, we think the P1 is bigger. So if we subtract them, um, alternatively, um, we should get a number that is greater than zero. That is kind of what we've been basing our, our numbers on the whole time. Um, so we have Z calculation significance test. We have those, and then we're going to plan. And for our plan, I don't feel like doing the conditions again. So I'm just going to put conditions um, discussed previously. And we have that. So you can, um, you can write that if you want to go to your other one and, and fill them out again, you can. Um, so we're going to do, again, this is a Z significance test. So when you check the area underneath the curve, you're going to do normal conditions. It'll be normal CDF for cumulative density function, and you can go um, find that. But you're going to do Z, uh, a Z interval significance test. Again, I want you to go on. I want you to find that, that Z. It's in your book if you can't find it. Um, you're going to do Z condition significance test. You're going to find that, that Z value. After you find that Z value, you need to go find the P value. Um, the P value, don't forget, you're going to go to normal CDF um, to find the P value. Uh, you can do that. And then after you do that, you're going to conclude. Um, you will conclude a significance test. You'll, you'll make a conclusion here. Um, just like we've done before. And your conclusion, um, what it's going to be, what it's going to look like, you'll say, because, because P is equal to whatever you found is whatever, I don't know, greater than, less than, or equal to an alpha of 0 0.05. We have or we don't have convincing evidence that gender matters when asking a question to junior high students. And the last thing you're going to do this wonderful Friday, you're going to interpret. Interpret. And your interpret, what I want you to do on this one, is I want this interpret to be a culmination of everything in the junior high experiment. And here are your rules. I want at least three sentences. I want you to go back through all the significance tests and all the confidence intervals and all the dot plots that we did. And I want you to discuss whether or not you believe, according to all the data and all the work and all the tests that we've done, this is, 
This is our fifth test on this same set of data. So we did a, we compared proportions without subtracting them. We actually did a dot plot. Um, we've done a lot with this, but uh, what I want you to do here now is, is not get this from anybody else, not copy anybody else's ideas, but I want you to go back and I want you to think, hey, does it really matter according to what the numbers are saying, um, whether or not a boy asks a question or a girl asks a question? And after you do that, um, you can take a picture of it, you can submit it online, and you are done for the week. Um, congrats. I know this has been difficult. Um, we're going we're gonna to keep crunching away at it. Um, I'm proud of you, and um, I'll see you Monday.